Hi, welcome back to What Jack Has Made. In this video, we're going to be covering how to programmatically create pages in Gatsby. So in the previous video, I showed you how to use a sort of static query logic within a page and then render out the information manually. Um, in this uh, video, we're just going to get rid of the about page altogether. And that's going to create some errors for us. So we can just restart our terminal. Um, we'll keep the index page on the 404. But before we kick back up the server, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at how we would programmatically create the pages. Now I've gone ahead and created um, the logic we're going to be using in this video just to save some time, but I'll go over how it works now. So first off, we're requiring path, which is a dependency you need in order to, to create pages. Um, this is just as part of the standard uh, Gatsby create pages API documentation. The next part is all custom where we're creating our own media fields, sort of, I guess you'd call it a template um, and an SEO fields template. And these are just so that we can reference um, all of these fields and field groups without repeating ourselves. So if we had posts and we wanted to get the SEO for that, and we had pages and we wanted to get the SEO for that, instead of repeating ourselves, we can create our own sort of template cookie cutter, and then just insert um, the template literal string SEO fields within our query. And it just sort of reduces the length of the query that we're creating in our code um, and makes no difference to the query that's rendered in the end. Um, so it'd be the same as saying copying this and putting it there instead of just referencing SEO fields. And then finally, we're creating the actual query itself. So this looks very familiar to the queries we've been running previously, where we were getting the slug, um, well, we're getting the URI, which is similar to a slug, um, the title, featured image um, fields, date, content, categories. Um, all related to the posts within our WordPress environment. And then this is where the programmatic part of the Create Pages API comes into play. So Gatsby provides a Create Pages API, which allows us to tap into um, the build runtime sequences um, and processes and run our own custom Create Pages function. So this is an asynchronous function, which says to wait until our query returns information and then immediately destructure it as data. I've put return null just for our examples, but I'll remove that now. If no data is returned um, from our WordPress key in our JSON payload, then just don't do anything. But if there is information there, loop over each post and then for each post, create a page. Now this should look very familiar to um, the syntax I used in the previous video where we mapped over each post and rendered the slug to the page. But this time, instead of rendering a slug to the page, what we're doing is we're creating an actual page. And this would be the same as saying post, get the URI or the slug, and then creating a file under pages. Um, so we could put forward slash post, forward slash post URI, which is essentially the slug of the page and we're specifying it down here as well. And we'll come back to context in a moment, but just note that we're saying this is the path that we want the page to be accessed at, and this is the component we want to pass the context to. So if we go into source components, templates, and post, this is our new um, post template. And essentially what we're doing is all the context that I just mentioned in our node file here, gets passed down as a prop under props.page context. And then from there, we're destructuring content and title, which is specified at title and content is available when we spread the post object from here. And what we're doing is we're saying render the title in h1 tag and get rid of the SEO component. And then we're dangerously setting the in HTML of an article element to be the content provided by the page context. So this can be a bit confusing right now. Um, I'll console log the page context and the props we get, just so I can visually show you what props we're getting. And if I go ahead and run develop again, 
now that I've removed the return null, we should generate 100 new pages um, that were previously available to us in our static query. So you can see it's picked up that one of our plugins has changed. Um, it's initializing a building schema. And you can see we've got 104 new pages. So just finishing building the development bundle and then we can go ahead and access these pages. Cool. So we referenced link and it's never used. That's just a warning Gatsby gives us to help write cleaner code. But if we go to our local host environment, now when I go to a page which doesn't exist, should get 404, but we also get a ton of new pages, all with the prefix um, forward slash post because that's the um, path we gave it in our Gatsby node uh, function where we had forward slash post. And then we also have the slug of the post itself. So if we go into um, sharing state, you can see we have the H1 as the title, and then this is the content um, available to us as a prop. And if we go in and inspect this uh, code for this page, we have a lot of errors there, um, but we also have, this is our props for the page. And this is the page context object within those props, which has categories, content, date, featured image, SEO, and all the keys that we specified in our template string. Um, the slug, the status, title, and URI, which is another way of looking at the slug. And if we go back into our query, you can see that all of the keys and values we have available in our props are all returned by this query that we're creating in our um, Gatsby node file. And we're passing all this information down as context, which is page context in our template. Um, so yeah, so you basically write um, several node uh, functions to generate each page. At the moment, we're only generating the posts, but if you wanted to generate pages, you'd write something similar to this, where you'd write pages instead of posts. And then for each page, you'd return um, a create page function. But in order to access that, we'd have to create our own pages uh, query, which would be quite easy to do, but uh, I'll, I'll do it really quickly in this video just to show you. So for each node, we're just going to get the title and we're just going to do pages and we're going to create a page for each one. We're just going to pass in the title and we'll remove the post prefix altogether. So page needs to replace this. You could have a different template if you wanted to, but in this series, we're just going to be using uh, a single template for all of our pages and posts. Um, unless we wanted to have something specific, like a certain component um, on our posts instead of pages, say like a sidebar, then we could use a post template and a page template and have different layouts. So hopefully this should return 106 no, 105 pages. I'm not sure because we haven't done any conditional logic for the home page at the moment. Because we've got an index.js file, but we've also got a home page uh, page in our WordPress. Okay, so 106 pages. And if we go back to our environment, if we go to the home page, I imagine it'll be quite. I don't know actually. Okay, so. That's nothing new. If we go to about, we have the about page. And if we go into console, you can see we have the title and the URI, which is passed in by our data.wordpress pages create page function. So that's essentially it. If you go ahead and copy this query and replace the template strings, you could use graphical to visually um, build out these queries and see what they look like before you run them in your Gatsby node file. But this is how you essentially build any pages programmatically and it'll save you a ton of time and not have to build out each page individually. Um, and yeah.
That's it.